All right. The Empire State strikes back. I have to announce something that's new. Jared's going to announce something that's new. I just created it at the request of some of our grad program members that are listening live. Uh Uh-oh. They wanted a Telegram channel, so I made one. It's t.me slash student of the gun. There you go. Really? Yep. You can go there, and you can use that now. Oh. So you're welcome. So that's a thing. So that is now a thing. And All that's right. too hard to remember. Studentofthegun.com slash telegram. Slash telegram. All right. So what's going on up in the Empire State? So uh, essentially, a lawsuit was filed against the state of New York, uh, with, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, hey, we, we, we went back and we read the whole Constitution thing, and it doesn't say in the Constitution that the government gets to demand from the citizen good cause to exercise a right. You do not have to demonstrate reasonable cause or need or you know you don't have to demonstrate need to the government to get your rights rights are not based on whether the government thinks you should have them see because that would be privileges a right is something the government has no authority to impede or to take away so well You didn't think that the bullies in New York were just going to lay down and take it, right? They're like, oh, oh, so you you think that that people don't have to beg for uh, rights from us? Well, we'll show you. We'll show you. And uh, this story is from the Denver Channel dot com. Uh, and it says, I thought that was weird. Yeah. I was like, what? what happened Gun applicants in New York will what? What are they going to have to do, Jared? We'll to, have for- to list social media accounts. <sighs> now, if you're a headline reader and, uh, and you're also a, what do we call them? A what? Um, reasonable person, I guess mm-hmm. would be the best term to say. If you're a headline reader and a reasonable person. You think, oh, that, you know, that's not so bad. However, you shouldn't have to do anything. Yeah. Dateline. This is this is totally Orwellian. This is you hear that? That is Orwell spinning at eight thousand RPM in his grave. You got the story up, Jared? Yeah. Dateline, so, Albany, New York. This is July eighth, twenty twenty two, is when it was posted. So a week after getting spanked, basically, by the Supreme Court. They said, oh, yeah. You know what's crazy? Oh, yeah? Is that they're, they spent, I don't even know how many countless man hours trying to figure out a way to oppress their citizens. Yep. Rather than just move forward. No, they're, and, they're and not just going to let or whatever you peasants do stuff. New York State is rolling out a novel strategy to screen applicants for gun permits. Gun permits. The state will require people seeking to concealed or carry concealed handguns to hand over lists of their social media accounts for a review of their character and conduct. By whom? By Zuckerberg? It's an approach applauded by many Democrats and national gun control advocacy groups as missed warning signs pile up in investigations of mass killings. One of the missed warning signs Bull. is, are you friends with any FBI agents? I was just about to say the, the thing that they're missing here is that most of these people that do these things are already known to law enforcement, have already been... Multiple encounters with law enforcement. Yes, that word. But some experts have raised questions about how the law will be enforced and how it will be addressed or how it will address free speech concerns. You mean like I don't have to justify what I say to the government? Some of the local officials will be tasked with reviewing the social media content. Also are asking whether they'll have the resources. You know why? Well, because we're going to no need more money. New funding was allocated to help manage the new requirement. Oh, well, that that's just a matter of time. They're going to have to just wait till the next session. And then, hell, they'll just allocate $100 million to pay people to scrub through your social media accounts to see if you said anything bad about Obama or Biden. or. So we're going to let 
So the, the Supreme Court just said, no, New York, citizens don't have to come to you and provide good cause or justify their desire to exercise a right. You cannot deny a right by telling people they have to justify it to you first. So what did they do? They're like, oh yeah? Well, if we find out that you said anything or wrote any words or shared a may may that we don't like, then you're not gonna get your permission slip. What? Yeah. If we read read the thing or see pictures or you know any stuff, you're like, well, you mean you're looking? Are you looking for evidence of crimes? Well, no, because because well, if people actually commit crimes, we don't we don't enforce criminal law. Well, anymore. Uh, well, that, that's not the point. The point is not to enforce criminal law. The, the point is to arbitrarily give a government agent the authority to decide which social media posts are okay and which ones are not. It's interesting, huh? Does that sound a little bit Orwellian to you guys? I smell... You smell it, Jared? I smell another lawsuit. <laughs> Oh, I smell another lawsuit. Wow. And what's crazy is the the Denver channel is kind of like, yeah, you know, well, some people, you know, some of those people think this might raise free speech questions. But we all know that no, according to President Meat Puppet, no amendment is absolute. And the government has the authority to just decide. <laughs> Jeez. So the government has the authority to decide which amendments they're going to follow and which ones they're going to ignore. Because none are absolute. Of course, no one in the press has the guts to raise their hand when the meat puppet says that and say, you mean like slavery and women voting and taxes they would be escorted out of the conference immediately well, well, what do you mean well it's the 16th amendment that says you're allowed to steal or you you can steal money from the the people's income because nowhere in the constitution does it say that the central federal government gets to reach their hand into the pocket of the citizens of utah wyoming texas and take money out well, yeah, but what we're dead is we're just like, you know, like, hey, you know what? We're World War II is expensive. And uh, and and you you guys are all patriots, right? Uh, yeah. So well, we're just going to do a tax so that we can cover the cost of fighting World War One, the war that no one in, in America wanted to be involved in. <laughs> like, and you're like, well, and of course, what, they, what do they say, Jared? They're like, it's just a tiny little percentage. You you won't even notice it. It's a tiny, small percentage of your income. It's so small, you won't even notice it. It's not that big of a deal. And for those of you who've never been to America, I'm going to go ahead and hip you to something. It never, no tax ever goes away. No tax ever gets smaller and it always increases. So, so uh, Sniffy Joe says that no amendment is absolute. Therefore, we can ignore the ones we don't like. Okay. Did you guys see, oh, speaking of slavery, did you see the, the note that I dropped into the show notes about uh, Nigerian slavery? How the, the Nigerian... Uh, oh, I saw that you dropped the note, but I didn't actually read it. Yeah, we're going to put that into notes. we're going to put it into the bonus hour. So anyway, some some government officials from Nigeria took their slave to England to have his kidneys harvested to give to their daughter. Really? Yes. When did you drop that in? Yesterday. 
didn't see that link this morning. Oh, yes, indeed he do. Yes, indeed he do. Uh, America's the worst country in the world, and America slavery. Okay, whatever. All right, how far have we been going? Uh, and in New York, this is what I have to say to you people in New York. All you guys, whoa, man, it it goes all the way back to the Biloxi Glass Case of Emotion Studios when New York, in the dead of night, passed the Safe Act bill. We're not going to debate it. It's not going to be public. It's a crisis. We're just going to do this, and you're going to suck it. The answer, by the way, is 52 minutes. Okay. And the people of New York said to us, that'll never stand. Kumo's going to be gone. We're going to appeal to the Supreme Court. We're going to get that overturned. Um, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a mathematician. Uh, but it's been six, seven years, eight years now since the SAFE Act got passed in the dead of night illegally. And they just went ahead and they, they took that whole, like, well, what does the law say we have to do to pass a law? What do we have to do? They're like, yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't care. It says we all have to agree. It's a crisis. We decided it's a crisis. So, so all that public debate and, and you know, I just pfft, throw that in the garbage. We're, we're going to do what we want to do when we want to do it, and the people are just going to suck it. Since we have time, I, I want to go back to the tax thing in the Constitution because there is an article that I want to understand what it means. Oh, okay. Because I thought that when I read it, I thought, oh, this does give the federal government the power to institute taxes. It does, not income tax. It doesn't. The federal government, Jared, you know how I know that that's a fact? Yeah, but we didn't say income tax earlier. Okay, or income tax. One of the two. Individual income tax, the federal government has no constitutional authority to get oh, individual go. income tax. I'll, I'll just read it. We have time. We have enough time to read this. So it's Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. It says, the Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. But all duties, imposts, and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States. Uh, to borrow money on the credit of the United States, to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with the Indian tribes, to establish a uniform rule of naturalization and uniform laws on the subject of bankruptcies throughout the United States, to coin money, regulate the value thereof and of foreign coin, and fix the standard of weights and measures, to provide for the punishment of counterfeiting the securities and current coin of the United States, to establish post offices and post roads, to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and investors the exclusive right to their respective writings and copyrights. Stories. Yes. Trademarks and copyrights. To constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court, to define and punish piracies and felonies committed on the high seas and offenses against the law of nations high sea high sea like the that's drink. like that's like yeah it's like a, an orange fruity drink that your grandma pours for you <laughs> to declare war grant letters of mark key and reprisal um what is that mark and reprisal yeah, it means reprisal. that's uh you can you can contract private uh individuals okay. to that's what i thought just yeah. making sure and make rules concerning captures on land and water to raise of uh, raise and support armies, but no appropriation of money to that use shall be for a longer term than two years. Hmm, interesting. To provide and maintain a Navy, to make rules for the government and regulation of the land and naval forces, to provide for calling forth the militia to execute the laws of the Union, suppress insurrections and repel invasions to provide for organizing arming and discipling the militia and for governing such part of them as may be employed in the service of the united states reserving to the states respectively the appointment of the officers and the authority of training the militia according to the dis discipline prescribed by congress that doesn't even happen today. no so okay wait hold on there's a couple more 
to exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district not exceeding 10 miles square as may by session of particular states and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of the United States and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other needful buildings. And this is the last thing to make all laws, which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foreign powers, or I mean the foregoing powers and all other powers vested by this constitution in the government of the United States or in any department or office thereof. Okay. Can I speak now? Yes. All right. I was wrong. I was wrong. They didn't use world war one as an excuse to pass the revenue act of 1913. What they did is they used world war one to increase the amount of taxes that they took from the people. The original doc, the original amendment was passed in 1913 and it was after world war one that wilson was like hey we're in debt so guess who gets to pay it that's right it would be you the american people so that that's something that i was always raised to believe was that the that the amount of money and it wasn't they they already had put it into place and then after world war one the government looked at the people and said, hey, look at all this money we spent. We're rescuing Europe from World War One. We got to you guys are going to have to pay. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court, it says uh, in the Pollock versus Farmers Loan and Trust Act, the U.S. Supreme Court declared certain taxes on income, the, uh, such as those on property under the 1984 Act to be unconstitutionally unapportioned direct taxes. So they found that these taxes violated the Constitution. You see, That's people who say, else. well, the government, it says right there in the Constitution that they can take individual people's money. No, they can't because the, they, the Supreme Court, they tried to do it. The Supreme Court knocked them down. And then that is why they had to come up with Amendment 16. They're like, well, crap. If the Supreme Court is going to smack us down and say that it is that it violates it says right here it said it is a unconstitutionally unapportioned direct tax which violates constitution so the right. supreme court they actually had the gall to read the constitution how dare they they're out of control well the and in section nine here one of the things it says no tax or duty shall be laid on articles exported from any state mm -hmm. so, so uh, uh and, and then so I'm trying to figure out um, in the somewhere in here, it does say that the government has you know, the federal government has the ability to regulate interstate commerce. Mm. So what they did is the government said, oh, so that the, the criminals in D.C. said, crap, the Supreme Court smacked us down. They told us we can't take our hand, our greedy, stinky hands and put it in those people's pockets. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to push an amendment. We're going to change the Constitution to give ourselves the authority to take direct taxes from the people. Now, the whole point I'm bringing all this up is because Sniffy Joe, the meat puppet, every once in a while, they send him out to, to tell America that no amendment is absolute. And they all have limitations and restrictions, and the government can. And nobody... Not one single scumbag sitting in the press gallery has the guts to raise their hand and say, does that include the 13th Amendment? Can we alter, modify the 13th Amendment? Does that include the 16th Amendment? Uh, does that include the 19th Amendment? Oh, I, uh, no. No. Uh, 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 well, I mean, you just said that no amendment is absolute and that we can alter, change, and, uh, you know, whatever. So the 19th Amendment says that chicks are allowed to vote, but you said that all amendments are subject to change and none of them are absolute. So my county doesn't think chicks should be allowed to vote. And so what you're saying is that we can pass a law that says chicks can't vote. 
Well, I never said that. I'm not an animal there. Well, you're an imbecile. You just said that we can pick and choose. How about Amendment 13? Amendment 13 says no more slaves. Uh, so can we have slaves now? Can we bring back like indentured servitude or, you know, can we like do slave light? What, what, what are you saying there? Well, no way. Uh, do you know where we lost our way? How, what, how much time we got? Uh, probably like 20 minutes. We're an hour and okay. two minutes in. Okay. So do you know where we lost our way with the amendment process? Jared, do you know? Uh, I don't know. I'll tell you. All of the first 10 amendments, the Bill of Rights is all about what, Jared? Zach, what is the Bill of Rights about? Uh, setting government powers or limiting government it, powers? Limiting. Thank you very much. The Bill of it's Rights. Like a lot of things. What do you The first here? 10 limits the authority of the government. Well, the entire Constitution it does that. Right. But the, but the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments, the reason they had to go in there is because our founding fathers, thank the Lord for them, said, we don't trust you, put it in writing. How do they, how do they, man, this is fascinating now, to me. It's like, how do they know? How do they know so early on is really the question. Because, because our founders studied the history of government yeah. throughout the world history. They, they knew, they're like, Every, they were educated men, and it wasn't like they were Harvard grads. They paid attention to the world. Yeah. And they said, and every government will become tyrannical. Every government, the more money and power you give them, the worse it will become. Doesn't matter. The French, the, the Greeks, the whatever, the, they knew that democracy was a failure. That's why we're not a democracy. But so the first, the first yeah. ten amendments are there specifically to limit the authority of the government. What the government decided to do, and if you look at the history of our country, we went a hundred years. Let's see, when was Amendment Eleven passed? I want to speak correctly. Seventeen ninety-five. Uh, Amendment Eleven. Oh, it was passed in, in 1794 and it was ratified in 1795. Okay, Amendment 11 says judicial power of the United States shall not be construed to extend any suit of law, yada, yada, yada. So we had 11, then we had 12 ratified in... 1803, 1804 ratified. 1804, all right, and 13... 1865. All right, so we went almost, we went almost 100 years with only three additional ones. Then 68. Then after seven. the Civil War, after the Civil War, what happened was the federal government said, oh, you know what? Well, you know what we can do? We can use the bully pulpit the, and we can use the media because now we have mass print media. We can make everyone in America pay attention to what we want them to pay attention to because we have the mass media of newspapers. This is before radio. And so what we will do is we'll have, and we know that Hearst was a yellow journalist. We know that Hearst saw his newspapers as ways to influence people's thinking and behavior for the good or bad, whatever, for whatever he wanted. We know this. Where we lost our way as a nation, people are like, oh, you, you radical, da, da, da. you like to talk about the first 10 amendments, but you don't like to talk about the others. Because here's what they did, Jared. All of the original amendments covered were, this stuff were based right? upon. It seems like it should. They were based upon limiting the power of the central federal government and ensuring the rights of the people. That's the first 10 after that, what did they start using? They started using amendments to create malum prohibitum. See, malum in se is what? A moral wrong. You don't need to convince people malum in se. If I say to you, hey, is murder wrong? You're like, yeah, murder is wrong. 
Malamin say, I don't need to like sit down and get out a whiteboard and convince you that murder is wrong unless you're an abortionist. Stealing. Is stealing good or bad? No, stealing's bad. That's Malamin say. Is rape good or bad? Rape is bad. Is lying good or bad? Lying is bad. All these things are Ten Commandments, Judeo-Christian basic rules. Every religion on planet Earth has a basic set of rules. Don't kill, don't, you know, steal, don't lie, don't cheat, whatever. But malum prohibitum is the government coming along and saying, you know what? We all went into a room in this building and we all decided that you people are going to do this. Well, what do you mean? Well, we just decided. Think about it. All the amendments after 10, they, they, they started like, well, how can we control? You see, Amendment 13 is not about restricting the authority of the central federal government and preserving the rights of the people. It's the exact opposite. Amendment 13 says we're going to give the government the authority to take as much of your money as they decide. You see, because ever since the passage of Amendment 13, they're like, well, we're just going to... 16. Oh, I'm sorry, 13, 16. Yeah, yeah 16. Thinking, ever since the passage of, of 16, they're like, well, we're just going to take 2% of your annual income for ourselves. We're going to spend it on what we want to spend it on. They're like, yeah, 2% was okay, but we really need 5 they are like, 5 ah. And then what is it? What do we know about the, the income tax? It's not even... Like the income tax rules are like, oh, do you do this? Don't you do that? Do you do this? Do you not do that? Da, da, da. Nothing is even. Nothing is across the board. Yeah, so it says here in Section 8, which has not been amended. I checked specifically for the amendment of Section 8, Article 1, Section 8. It says uh, that all duties, imposts, and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States. But they're not. Some people get, say, a lot of people in the United States think the tax system is great because the federal government has convinced them that it's a lottery. And so they'll never fight against it because to them it's free money. It's not free money. See, if you want to know the problem with the amendment system is the first 10 followed the rules of the Constitution. The first 10 limited the authority of the federal government and ensured the rights of the people. After that, the farther away from 10 you get, the more authority the amendments grant to the government. I mean, look at look at 19. Was it 18 or 19? Which was prohibition? 18? That's true because you don't think it's true? No, I don't think that's What is 16? Well, twenty. If if the further away it gets, the uh, the further away the amendment gets from ten, the more power it grants to the thing. Then the the most recent one, uh, I could I could agree with that. Number twenty seven, I could agree, but number twenty six is is um, the right of the citizens of the United States who are eighteen years of age and older to vote shall mm-hmm. not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of age. Do you know why that is? Why did our founders pick 21? Um, probably because you're more able to make a uh, valid, logical decision when you're 21. Because, because, well, first of all, they understood the human development. The human brain is not finished developing at 18. It's still developing. Number two, people who were over 18 who were like, 19, 20, 21, by that time they were 21, they were active, involved members of their community. They had jobs, they had careers, and so on and so forth. They're married, they had children. So they were responsible adult members of, of society, whereas 18-year-olds, most of them are still living with their parents and so forth. The reason that it was the Democrat Party of the United States that pushed that amendment because they firmly believed that they could influence the voting habits of 18, 19, and 20-year-olds. They firmly, that's they did that. It was a vote-harvesting scheme by the Democrat Party. So now, it the, failed. So what was the initial... What I'm most interested in is what event... Triggered, Which lie did they no, use? No, no, no I'm, let me ask my question. Which event triggered each of these uh, amendment 
the constitutional conventions or or whatever. I don't even remember the. We process. don't have a. Con- it wasn't a convention. Uh, you know why I don't remember the process? Because the last amendment was done in 1992. Mm-hmm. I was two years old. Yeah. So I've never went through an actual amendment um, being added to the Constitution. Now I remember theoretically what we learned in school, but what is the actual process? Well, it's in the Constitution. Look at number 18. What was 18? 18 was prohibition. Prohibition did not guarantee the rights of the people. Prohibition overturned Amendment 10. You see, in Amendment 10, with Amendment 10, if Mississippi, if everybody in Mississippi got together and decided, you know what? Alcohol is the devil, and we don't want to have alcohol here. Then under Amendment 10... Mississippi would have the authority to be a dry state and so on and so forth. What the feds did are like that damn son of a bitchin' 10th amendment is in our way and we can't have that. So what do they do? Amendment 18 is malum prohibitum has nothing to do with malum in amendment 18 gave the United States central federal government more authority, power, and money than they had ever had up to that point. It allowed them to overturn and to ignore Amendment 10 and to reach into every single one of the states and exercise their power. Amendment 18 was terrible. But the problem is the genie got out of the bottle. Even though we got... we came to our senses and repealed it with amendment 21 it was too late because this because washington dc had already tasted that power they had tasted the power they had tasted the authority and they found that they liked it they liked creating centralized federal bureaucracies that could go into every state and swing their big wiener around and force people to do what they wanted. If you want to know what the problem is with amendments, is most of the amendments, I just pointed it out, 18, uh, 16, and so forth. If you want to be a strict constitutionalist, you say, okay, the point of the first 10 was to limit the power of the federal government, end of story to ensure and guarantee the inalienable rights of the people. If an amendment is proposed that does not do that, it's kind of like when I was a police officer and there were no suspects. A crime occurred, no suspects. What do you do? You say, all right, this is the crime. We don't have any suspects. How do we go about finding suspects? You look at that and you say, who would have benefited from that action who benefits from that action who benefits from amendment 18 who benefits from amendment 16 oh well the government benefits the people don't benefit the government benefits think about that uh how far are we in zach currently one hour and 13 minutes or 15 minutes rather uh, do we have any questions in Discord or comments or people like jumping up and down screaming or anything like that? Uh, give me a quick second. I do not see any questions in the comments at the moment. No. Okay. Uh, before we go, I, I did. I want to. I don't want to bring you guys down. I don't want to be. A, I don't want to be a, a bummer. Uh, but we lost an extended member uh, of our family this weekend. Uh, a gentleman named Craig Fritz. A lot of you guys in the grad program know Craig. Craig had been with us uh, as an, a very active member of the grad program for many years. He He's one of the guys that convinced his wife to be quiet and listen. <laughs> like, what is this guy yelling about on the radio? Just, just be quiet and listen to him, okay? That's funny. Craig uh, was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of cancer several years ago. And the doctors being what they are, they're like, oh, well, you got this and you're going to be dead in six months. So get your crap together. But Craig said fornicate that. Yeah, but he held out and he proved him wrong. 
and he kept hanging on and he got himself a few more years of life but this weekend we lost him he just he we lost him so his journey has ended but he was an extended member of our family and we're diminished and the grad program's diminished and you guys in the grad program let you guys know i don't but uh, we found out yesterday so Fair winds and following seas, shipmate.